Welcome to the newest episode of the E-Academy in which we will talk about the configuration of the Perfecta control panels with the Perfecta software. Today we will show you how to set up a simple wireless alarm system based on the Perfecta 32WRL panel. What will be necessary? A PC with Windows operating system, a USB RS converter to connect the computer to the control panel, a complete set including a Perfecta 32WRL control panel, and a PRF LCD WRL wireless keypad. Also, a wireless motion detector MPD300, a key fob MPT350, a wireless external siren MSP300R the Perfecta Soft software, which is available for download on our website. The panel has just been turned on for the first time. It has already been connected to the computer. Actions like connecting to the computer and starting your work in the Perfecta Soft software, that is, selecting a new project, establishing a connection, setting the time in the control panel, and deleting the trouble record, have already been covered in the episode in which we presented the configuration of the wired systems. The only differences are the control panel mode and the name given to the new system. Moreover, all the wireless devices are added to the system already have their batteries inserted. Now we can move on to setting the control panel. Choose the hardware tab. First, we will add the PRF LCD WRL wireless keypad. Important note, a system based on the Perfecta 16WRL or Perfecta 32WRL control panel doesn't have to include the PRF LCD wireless keypad. For proper operation of the system, it is enough to have one PRF LCD WRL wireless keypad which has been logged in earlier. We can choose any of the unused keypad addresses. We can see the options available for a wireless keypad in the bottom part of the list. To add a new device, click the plus key. A window for adding a wireless device will unfold on the right. Perfecta Software offers two possibilities for adding wireless devices to the system. Now we will show you the first one. We start by entering the serial number. This number is located on the rating sticker. You will find the sticker on the electronic board of the keypad. Now the program will ask us to violate the tamper of the added keypad. After receiving the information on the tamper, the program will confirm the logging of the device with a notification lit in green. It will also display the type of keypad, PRF LCD WRL. At this moment, we can still change the number of the address in the added device. We confirm by clicking OK. Now we can see that the type and the serial number of the keypad have appeared on the list. We can now move on to the settings. One of them is the lack of presence filter. It defines the maximum time after which the control panel should notify an alert if it has no contact with the keypad. The time scope available is from 20 minutes to 48 hours. What is important is that the filter may be set for every wireless device individually. Wireless keypads offer a wake-up option. When it is turned on, an inactive keypad will still react to control panel transmissions, for example, it will wake up upon receipt of information about an emergency or time countdown. It is possible to exchange the batteries in wireless keypads without turning on the service mode. For this purpose, mark the user may exchange batteries in the PRF LCD WRL option during configuration. This is how we finish the configuration of the PRF LCD WRL keypad. We send the data to the control panel. Now we will show you the second automatic way of adding a wireless device to the Perfecta system. It may be useful when it is impossible to check the serial number. We will show you this method on the example of the MPD300 detector. So let's move on to the Zone tab. We choose one of the zones. The options for wireless detector are available on the list. To add it, we click the plus key. A menu is displayed for adding a new device on the right. We choose the Auto option. Now we have to violate the tamper of the added detector. After the new device has been found, the program will automatically fill in its serial number and model. Violate the tamper again. The devices have been recognized. We can still change the zone number to which we will assign the detector. We complete by clicking OK. Wireless detectors are automatically assigned with a 2ELL NO circuit type. In this way, we will not only be informed about the violation but also about the tamper of the detector. 
At this point, we can also give it a name. Assignment to partitions, selection of standby mode, and types of reactions have been discussed in the previous episode. So we can assume that the detector configuration is complete. We send the data to the control panel. In the same way, we can also add other detectors of the wireless microsystem. Wireless detectors compatible with the perfecter panel. Another stage of system creation is adding the wireless siren MSP300. So let's move to the Outputs tab. In the Perfector 16WRL and Perfector 32WRL control panel, four outputs are reserved for wireless sirens with numbers from 13 to 16. Choose one of them. Click Plus. For our siren to be added automatically, we follow the instructions on the screen. We confirm by clicking OK. We can see that there are a few options available for the wireless siren. First we choose the alarm type and the partition in which the tamper of the device will be signalled. We also choose the type of output, external siren, and set the time of its activity. one minute. We also have to define which zone will activate the siren. We can also change the name. Configuration complete. After the data has been sent to the control panel, the siren will be ready. The final step of creating the system is adding the key fob. Perfector control panels are compatible with the MPT350 model. Key fobs are assigned to particular users, so we move on to the relevant tab. Unfold the list key fobs and click the empty field marked as serial number next to the chosen user. Then click plus. A window for adding a key fob pops up. To add it automatically, we can press any button on the key fob. The software will ask you to press any button again. At this point, you can also change the user number. Click OK. This is important information. Please remember that the user who gets the key fob has to possess the relevant authorization and maintain the given partitions. Why? Because he can only use the key fob for the functions to which this user is authorized. Now we can assign the relevant functions to each of the key fobs buttons. After clicking the right mouse button of the chosen cell on the list, a menu of options will pop up. In our system, we will assign the button with an empty circle symbol to turning on full standby in position 1. Each of the available functions may also be chosen by using its number. The triangle will be assigned with function number 44, which turns off the standby mode and deletes alarms in partition 1. In the last line of the chart, we can define the default button functions. This means that any new key fob will be assigned with the same set of settings. However, if we decide that the given key fob should be personalized, we can change the functions to the particular buttons at any time. And with that, we complete the key fob configuration. All we have left to do is send the data to the control panel. To finish, let's check the signal level of the wireless devices logged into the system. We move on to the partition status, zones and outputs list. Then we unfold wireless devices signal level. Values are defined in percentages. The signal levels should be checked when the devices are placed in their final locations. If it is lower than 40%, it is advisable to change the mounting positions of the particular device in order to obtain a better signal. We can see that the signal level on our devices is very good, so they can now be finally assembled in the chosen location. That's all for today. We hope that after watching this episode, configuring the wireless system based on the Perfector control panel will not cause any problems. It is worth remembering that by using wired and wireless devices within one system, it is easy to create a hybrid installation. Thank you, and we hope to see you in the next episodes of the eAcademy. See you!